If hard work was what it was gonna take to make it to the top, then that's exactly what I'd serve up. Black girl, mixed with grit, stardust, spice, magic. Sylvia and me. Sylvia and Sylvia and me. Sylvia and me. Sylvia and Sylvia. Sylvia. Hi, I'm Sylvia Beckerman, host of the podcast series, Sylvia and May, conversations with extraordinary, inspiring women. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tammy Charles. I am an author. And my newest book is Muted, a YA novel in verse. I've also written picture books and middle grade novels as well. And welcome to Sylvia and me. Tammy, thank you so much for joining me here today. And as you said, you are an author. You were also an educator yes. and you're a mom. Your son now is 11, Christopher. Yes. And you mentioned a couple of books. Um, one, of course, we'll talk about uh, your newest book, Muted. But I wanted to briefly um, talk about All Because You Matter. And that was a picture book. Yes. Can you give a very, you know, just a short, <laughs> yes, you're, um, it's a, uh, it's a love story in, in a lot of ways, but why did you write this book? I, I didn't want to. <laughs> that's, that's the ticket. Um, it was the need to have this conversation with my son, uh, sparked by tough questions that I noticed that he was asking me as he got older. So I think like all parents, when they have a child, they just want to keep their child little forever and innocent and precious. And I tried, I really tried, but time doesn't wait for anyone. My son entered school, he entered kindergarten, he met kids from all over, which was wonderful and it still is very wonderful. Uh, but there were some things that he experienced and things that he learned. And I remember one of his first tough questions for me as a kindergartner was when he learned about Dr. King and he came home and he said, mom, if, if Dr. King was such a good guy and he wanted peace for everyone, why did the bad guys hurt him? <laughs> so that's a tough question to ask. I believe your son yeah. was quite young at that time. Five. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> so that, that really kicked off a series of questions that I gradually realized, okay, my son is is starting to notice a pattern here. He's noticing uh, injustice against people of color, people who very much look like him. So how do I have these difficult yet necessary conversations with him? Well, I need to do it in a way that affirms his worth. And what better way than to write him uh, a lullaby almost, uh, <laughs> an anthem to remind him that he matters and that he mattered before he even got here. And in writing this book, I have to say, I thought I was writing it just for my son, but it, it became so much bigger than that. So it started off as a seed, planting a seed for my son. And then I realized children of color, children from marginalized backgrounds, this is a message that they too can yeah. benefit from. Yeah. And then the kicker was this, wait, all children can, no That's matter right. the background. Um, why? Well, because no matter, walk, no matter what walk of life you come from, it's important for our kids to know what kindness and respect looks like because they'll be the ones taking over. We're not gonna be here for long. It, they're gonna take over the world and they need to, to lead with empathy and kindness. So All Because You Matter is that love song. It is that anthem for children who need that message the most. You matter. And, and as you just said, empathy, kindness, love, understanding, empathy especially. And yes, I understand that you did start out to write this for your son. And then you figured it was great for children of color, marginalized children. And then, yes, it, it is a book for all children um, because it's, it's understanding. It's every child matters. 
um, and the question that your son that that um, started you on this journey of writing this particular book. You have no idea what other questions other children have come home and asked their moms and dads because of something they heard or they saw that um, either they had no idea what the answer was or it scared them, you know, um, and so on. So it's a, it's a book for all, all children. Thank so you. now I want to go into this beautiful new book that you just uh, was just released called Muted. And it, it is in, um, it's a novel in verse. Can you explain what a novel in verse is? Sure. So a verse novel, it tells a story in poetry. So the way I wrote, the way I wrote it was, was very intentional because my main character, Denver, she's a singer songwriter. So I wanted to give the reader an experience. First, I wanted it to feel like a roller coaster because the music industry is a roller coaster. But I also wanted to kind of show off her songwriting chops. And the way to do that for me was to tell the story in poetic format. Okay, so now I'm gonna back up a little because um, it, it's great how you wrote it and, and it's, it's, it's wonderful in, in the fact that it is written in verse and, and why. Um, and really the, the word muted, it's about a young girl finding her voice, being realizing that she has power in her voice and um, when you mentioned uh, a songwriter, singer songwriter, that's something that you know just a little bit about, if I'm not mistaken, starting from when you were about 13 until your late, your early 20s. What exactly did you do? So in middle school, I joined, well, I formed a singing group with two of my best friends. Um, we were four and we started as three, then there were four of us, and then we were back to three. And we tried so hard to enter the music industry. And we had these very tiny brushes with fame. For example, we, we sang for boys to men. We had a song that played on the radio that no one probably heard because it was like two in the morning. Um, but we, you know, we had this thrill of a ride from the time I was 13 until about 22. Um, so it, it was a great time, but this was during the late nineties when the market was saturated with girl groups. I mean, in Vogue and Destiny's Child <laughs> and, and Jade and Brownstone, there were so many girl groups. So it didn't quite happen for us, but we certainly had a good time trying. Okay. So you have that experience and you decided to write this particular book. And as I said, it's about a young girl who is... Um, Again, she, as you did when you were younger, wants to be successful, wants to be famous, wants to be a well-known singer-songwriter. She meets a guy who is going to promise her everything and things don't exactly work out that way. Why did you, why was it necessary for you to write this book now? Oh, this was, again, one of those stories that I, I just had I had so much trouble with in the beginning. I tried to write the story back in 2014. The difference was, first of all, the story was in prose. So that wasn't working for me. I just kept getting stuck at like 60 pages. I couldn't get past it. But also, I, I think that my purpose wasn't uh, clear enough in my earliest version Yes, there was this girl who had stars in her eyes and wanted to be a star retelling the story of how she came close but didn't quite make it um, on a plane ride home. That all stayed. But in the beginning, that character wanted to be a singer, dancer, like any and everything in the entertainment industry. What happened 
between me getting stuck, writer's block, okay. and through the years, I would always think about this character. I, I would always think about this story. And then I started to notice these headlines that were creeping up. Stories of women who were essentially being taken advantage of in the workplace by men in power. And then there were documentaries. And what I noticed, and if I if I may share of course. a few statistics, because I yes, I have yet to share these. <laughs> no, I want I want you to. But um, so what I, what I found was this in my research. Um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that 70, uh, 71 percent of workplace violence. Uh, that was the percentage of females who experienced workplace violence. And, you know, 24% of those incidents were related to personal relationships. And three out of four of those incidents of abuse, they went unreported. Now, you take all of that, obviously, they, they went unreported because these women feared retaliation, or they just believed that no one would believe them, including law enforcement. But what I wanted to cover in Muted was more complex than that. And that is putting a lens on specifically the music industry, which I was a part of, yeah. and, ex and especially the treatment of black and brown girls, women and girls. Like we don't talk about that enough. And there was a documentary that did, and I was very inspired by it. And it got me thinking, you know, yeah, my singing group, we, we had our moments, but what if we had come across an Epstein, a Weinstein, a Kelly, you know, what if, what would have happened to us then? Once I, once that light bulb hit, I was off to the races with this story and it really just poured from there. I think authors, we, we put a piece of ourselves in everything that we write. And that's what was missing from my earlier version. I needed to just focus on singing. And that's a world that I knew. And knew quite well, um, especially starting from such a young age. And, you know, the, what you have written um, is so touching and, and so real because this young girl, she's a teenager, you know, teenagers are looked upon as being very naive. They, they'll believe what they want to believe. They'll hear what they want to hear. Um, and if somebody says, hey, fame is around the corner, there are so many that are just taken in. It's like the old story, uh, at probably way before your time, but you taught your kids, uh, if somebody offered you candy, you know, there's, there's a man at, at, in a car, run, kid, come here, I got candy for you, Yeah, run the other way. And here it's about the same thing. Um, the antagonist is, is dangling candy in front of uh, Denver's face. Yeah. So she does take it and it happens so much. And as you were saying, a lot of it is unreported. Oh yeah. Especially when they're that young. Exactly. They're, they're scared. So one of the things that I know that you purposely do not do is you don't um, say who that um, antagonist might be. You don't relate him to any specific person. And you have a reason for not doing that. Can you explain, please? Um, I do have a reason for not, I mean, other than clearly the antagonist has a name in the story. Right. Right. But outside of that, like giving my antagonist a specific uh, name or like pinpointing who specifically that is, the reason why I won't do that is because the men who do these hideous acts I don't think they deserve the attention. So let's, you know, let's shine a light on the voices who need to be heard. Because these men, these men in power, 
with all of the money and the resources to make people go away, to make stories go away, they don't deserve their names to even be spoken. If if I'm being quite candid. No, I, I so <laughs> agree. I think, see, I had heard you say that and I wanted you to reiterate it because it's so, that reason is so powerful. Yeah, they, they, they already have all of the money, all of the power and, and attention. And in many cases, uh, these men are still making money. People are still buying their music, watching their movies, right. or, you know, buying their books. Like they're not suffering for the most part. That's slowly changing. And it, we still need, you know, we have a lot more work to do, but let's uplift these girls and women who feel as if no one would believe them. So that's why I, I just like to kind of zoom in more on those people, you know, the girls who need it the most. So tell us, how does Denver actually find her voice? How does she get the courage? Um, or as I would say, the chutzpah to actually find her voice. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> In any language, that's what it is. How does she find that? Um, you know, there is a line I want to share with you. <laughs> There's a line in the here. No, really. See, I have all kind of like papers here. There's there's a part in the book that it's on page two hundred three. I'm going to turn to the page. Um, I didn't. I did an interview yesterday, and the host said, "Would you find a line in the book that you feel defines your character?" Here's the line. Okay. If hard work was what it was going to take to make it to the top, then that's exactly what I'd serve up. Black girl, mixed with grit, stardust, spice, magic. Here's the thing. Denver, at the beginning of the story, this is what I love about her. She was so fully formed to me as a character. She knew exactly what she was good at. She knew what she wanted out of life, music, that's it. There was no other path. And, and straight away in the beginning of the book, I think I established that, I hope I did, that she is so passionate. And like you said, she has that chutzpah for mm -hmm. her craft. Well, along the way, as you follow the story, you see Merck, the antagonist, he's almost like a spider. You know how spiders move so slowly and gracefully? And then they form this web and all of a sudden you're stuck in the web. That's what happened to Denver. She lost her way. She forgot who she was midway through the story. But towards the, I'd say around part three, definitely going into part four, she started to remember that she was that girl mixed with grit and stardust and spice and magic. So she went back to some of her old qualities of formulating a plan. The same way that she formed a plan to meet this monster, she remembered, wait, if I did that, then I can mute him as well. And I think that really speaks to the journey that a lot of women go through. Sometimes we lose our confidence. We yes, lose we our know. way. But there's, there's a spark that comes along and reminds us of who we once were, but who we can be again. So I think it was just that little reality check for her. And I think it's so important to for, for young girls, teenagers, young girls to understand. And what's great is you took it from something you know, knew about and that's songwriting and singing and trying to make that work. Um, and so you took what was your passion uh, and you put it into this character, Denver, except you went a little bit further with it, with everything going on, uh, as you spoke about the documentaries and so on, and realized that it really is uh, relatable and something that um, could help some young people understand that 
just because it's your passion, you have to use your voice. You shouldn't be silenced. Absolutely. And what I'm hoping that readers will pull from this, I don't, I don't want readers to think, oh, well, this is a book about a girl who wants to be a singer and, and I can't relate to that. You could fill in the blank exactly with any dream you have for yourself and the lessons are still the same. No matter what dream you have for yourself, let's say you want to be an athlete. Well, you have to follow a certain path for that. And along the way, you have to make sure that you're surrounding yourself. I call that your village. You surround <laughs> yourself with people who will uplift you and who care for you. Listen to your loved ones. They are wise and, and they'll speak from the heart. And there's always going to be someone along the way who whispers in your ear and tries to strip at, at your confidence and try to make you think twice about your, your power. Um, so I'm hoping that readers will just fill in the blank and say, oh yeah, this could happen in this industry. No one has the power to mute you. Well, that is such a powerful message to tell anyone, especially young girls, mm -hmm. your voice is your power. You can use it. You do not have to be silenced. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about the cover. This is a podcast and um, the video will be on YouTube, but I'd like you to describe the cover because it is exceedingly powerful. Oh, I love talking about the cover. I'm going to put it up yep. to the screen. Uh, if you if you look really deep, you can see that the main character, that's Denver, she has two different colored eyes. Now, I did that intentionally. Uh, she has a condition called heterochromia. And for me, I just thought it would be such uh, a metaphor if each color of her eye could represent a theme in the story. So her blue eye to me represents the sky or the ocean, but particularly the sky because that is where she's telling the story from. She's on a plane ride home uh, and she's apologizing to her dad for causing all this trouble for trying to become a superstar. But that blue eye representing the sky also represents the limitlessness of her dreams. She has so many dreams for herself. Um, so I thought that was like a powerful metaphor, but her other eye, which is brown, to me, that that's earth, it's soil, it's rich, it's, it's home. And that's where she's going. She's on a plane ride and she's going home. So, and, and also I just like to say, you see the word muted kind of written so many times, but to me, Denver is breaking through those letters. It's a, it's a play on like breaking glass ceilings. She's breaking through the silence. And, and that's the thing that that's what I wanted to be very specific about because for those who are listening, it is a beautiful face of a young lady and you see her as, as uh, you just said, Tammy, the word muted is in several places all over the cover, but her face is breaking through. She's, she's breaking out of the word muted. Yeah. And again, it's her voice. So with everything else, you know, the documentaries and so on going on, what are, what have you been reading or maybe even um, watching, but what have you been reading that kind of uh, relates to the same topic? Oh, I did. I did a lot of reading and watching television to, to help me through this. Um, Let's see, well, this was two years ago. So let me see. I read a lot of poetry by Rupi Kaur. Have you ever heard of her? Uh, she's a, I want to say she's an Indian Canadian poet. Okay. And um, she's, she's written some amazing poetry like Milk and Honey is my favorite. Um, she tells a story in, in so few words. So I really used 
her poetry to guide me and kind of help me with my own. I read a lot of uh, work by Margarita Engel. She's a Cuban American poet. In fact, she mentored me through this book. Like she specializes in verse. Uh, so that was really amazing. I read Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds and that's told in verse as well. I like the structure of that book because it, it kind of mirrors what I did with Muted in that it really takes place, Muted takes place on an airplane ride home. Long Way Down takes place on an elevator ride down. So it's a retelling of a story on a 60 second elevator ride. So I just thought that was genius. Um, I did read, well, I reread 13 Reasons Why, yet another story with very heavy themes, but it also is a story that's kind of retold in one day. Um, and of course I watched the documentaries and lots of news, so. And the other thing that, that you did was you did the um, audio version yes. of Muted. And I like to say, you know, you didn't narrate it. You played the part. You played all the parts um, of Muted. So how did that feel? I felt like a teenager all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, was, it was really like reliving my teenage dreams. And if I'm being honest, when I wrote the book, I wrote the book, um, well, I started it seven years ago. And then I really like right out the gate in 2019, I, I hit 2019 running. Um, and I wrote the songs then, but I never had any intention to do anything with the songs. I just wrote the lyrics, you know, I didn't know how the songs went or anything. And then the pandemic hit uh, last year, obviously. And over the summer, I was asked, hey, can you narrate this thing? And I was like, oh, there's songs. I think I'm going to have to figure out how these songs go. <laughs> so, so I actually went to Shahola, which is where my parents live, and I pulled a Denver. I sat in my parents' basement, just like Denver sits in the basement, and I wrote the melodies to these songs. And then, so, so cool, I got to actually sing the songs, act out the parts, you know, have fun with the different accents and of the different characters. I really put my all into it, and it just brought back a lot of memories from my, my days of being a singer. That's fantastic. And you're helping, as we said, and it, it's worth repeating, young girls um, to find their voice, to yeah. keep that in mind. So what's next up for you? What do you, are you just sitting on your laurels or are we, Wish. other than virtual teaching? <laughs> Lots of, uh, I do, I do a lot of virtual speaking gigs, like a lot of school visits, which has been great. Um, but admittedly, I had the worst writer's block for a good portion of the pandemic. Um, I am just starting to find my voice again. So um, I'm working on some picture books and I am mapping out what I hope to be a novel. So stay tuned. <laughs> oh, most definitely. <laughs> Tammy, I thank you so much. Um, where can people find out more about you? Sure. I am on Twitter at Tammy Writes Stuff. I'm on Instagram at Tammy Writes. And my website is TammyWrites.com. And that's T-A-M-I, Tammy Writes. Again, thank you so much for taking the time and, and uh, telling this great story and a, a fantastic book. Thank you so much. You can find us on all of your popular podcast platforms and, of course, our website, sylviame.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned.